So we got luxury lifestyle reactions for the love of the culture, for the love of all the hype beasts out there who enjoy looking at this type of stuff and learning. We got reaction videos, commentary, and video essays on the way, as well as just in-depth thoughts about life period. But today, uh, let's do the history. Well, this video, let's do the history of Chrome Hearts. Let's watch that. I'm not a Chrome wearer, but shout out all you Chrome boys out there, you Chrome boys and girls. Y'all, y'all really be dripped down. Hey everyone, welcome back to Threducation. Today we're going to be talking about. Shout out Threducation, one of my favorite channels out here. Chrome Hearts. I've been following Chrome Hearts for a while now, and for a long time the brand has felt like one of the fashion industry's best kept secrets. However, in recent years it feels like that secret is finally out because the brand only seems to be getting more popular, so I figured now's a good time to talk about where it all started and how it got to where it is today. That being said, this is the history of Chrome Hearts. In the late 1980s, Richard Stark was working as a premium leather dealer in Los Angeles, and his friend, John Bowman, okay. was working as a leather manufacturer. They got their start in Both the 80s. Both of them 80s. were deeply ingrained in motorcycle culture, and decided to put their talents to use to make themselves some- You can tell the law is definitely heavily inspired by biker and biker culture. So it's good to know that they're authentic to that, that he actually was a, a leather maker and a biker himself. Leather jackets. Working out of a garage, they began making gear for themselves and their friends, and before long... And that's they usually how a lot of these people start. They start, like, set small... Up a small leather manufacturing company. Yeah. Out the garage. And also welcomed that's, Leonard that's fire. into the mix. Kamu was a jeweler who specialized in the use of sterling silver, something that hey. has since become one of Chrome Hearts' staple offerings. Your man's just trying to become a jeweler specializing in now, gold, it's important to so point shout out to him. At this point in time, the three of them weren't really operating as a brand. In fact, they didn't even Probably have a more brand what, name. A they were basically just, just making custom pieces for yeah, whoever wanted them. Making pieces. But that all changed it. in 1989 when they were asked to create some wardrobe pieces for a low-budget comedy horror film called Chrome Hearts. Okay. Now, hopefully there's some they got sirens name going from off in your movie. head right now because, yes, that is where they got the name for the brand. Chrome Hearts was just a working title for the film during the casting stage, and it would later be renamed to Chopper Chicks in Zombie Town. I don't know who... Yo, the song he's playing in the background is Bria's Interlude on Piano by Drake. That song's going pretty hard. Who was in charge of making that decision, but they nailed it. Anyways, <laughs> this film didn't just inspire their new brand name. It also opened new doors for them. One of the lead actresses from the film happened to be dating Steve Jones of the Sex Pistols who at was the that? time. And after seeing know who that is? designs, he was an immediate I'm not, fan. I'm not hip. Jones commissioned Chrome Hearts Wait. to create some pieces, and when he began Shout wearing them on stage, the brand without him, began to the wouldn't have Chromey. In fact, the following was enough for them to decide it was time to open up a proper production factory in L.A. That's in the place part, to go. To being seen L.A. On Steve Jones, Chrome Hearts became particularly a lot of the clothing brands come out of community. L.A. I guess because uh, all the Hollywood the people that's out there, Kravitz, the Motley Crue, New York and, and L.A. And Roses. I mean, as legendary as these customers were, perhaps I'm not surprised all of these rock and roll like celebs first got on the wave first, cause like first got on the wave first. Well, we're, we're first to the wave because of the the brand's association with bikers, bike culture that would you know heavily tied into like rock and roll culture. That's like if a brand from Hip hop culture, nah, that's not a good way to put it. But you know, I, I'm trying to not say a black brand, but me being at a black owned brand, if I had my own brand that was birthed of ur urban culture, of course I'm gonna try to get it put on to like people that like hip hop. So that would be hip hop artists and like ballers and stuff like that. Perhaps none of them were as important as Lori Lynn. Lori Lynn was working as an art director when she ran into Richard at a fish market in Malibu. The two began Shout collaborating on a swimwear line that Lori Lynn was working on, and within just a few months, the two of them would be happily married. 
Lori Lynn then began working for Chrome Oh, Arts, yeah. And this was an important turning point for the brand. I know the, she took the woman behind it is, like, really important. Photography, yeah. And even helped introduce ReadyWare, which so opened Chrome Lord. Arts up to a much wider public audience. She really turned it up, in my, my opinion, understanding. this was the start of Chrome Hearts as we know it today. Yeah. They see what a good woman do for you. I see body. I hear body. I don't know about it personally just yet. As I mentioned, Chrome Hearts was founded DMs by open. three people. <laughs> Richard Stark, John Bowman, and Leonard Kamu. Richard Stark, John Bowman, Leonard Kamu. But for reasons that aren't exactly clear, the three of them decided to part ways in 1991. And Dang. Richard Stark purchased their shares in the business, making him the sole owner. Richard Good had always him. been the heart and soul of the brand. So if anything, this just gave him more freedom to turn Chrome Hearts into everything he wanted it to be. You can sign up now. That's exactly what he did. It's him. From 1991 onwards, Chrome Hearts continued producing leather goods and silver jewelry. But now, using his previous experience as a high-end carpenter, Stark expanded the brand into furniture and home goods. Meanwhile, yeah, they make a lot of stuff. Overseeing most they of make the a lot, a lot of stuff. As well as the Chrome Hearts magazine. I highly recommend you check out some of the Chrome Hearts magazines because Lori Lynn is an amazing okay. photographer and it's almost eerie how well she captures the Chrome Hearts vibe in her work. She really did that, that Chrome, said, Heart Chrome Heart life. was really starting to take shape. But remember See, that's that the at thing this point in time they were about certain trends and certain like styles why I don't go for them. Like it's like a whole culture behind them. Like Rick Owens, like it's a whole culture behind Rick Owens. And Chrome Hearts, it's a whole culture behind it. I just don't throw that joint on just to, to rock it. Still catering mostly to the grungy rock and roll biker demographic. Make no mistake, that's still the case today. But nowadays, just about everyone knows about Chrome Hearts. So the question <laughs> Everybody. is, how did they make that transition from cult favorite to world famous? As the story goes, in 1991, Richard Stark brought a single motorcycle jacket and pair of chaps to Tommy Purse, the founder and creative director of the legendary LA-based boutique Maxfield. Mm -hmm. Purse liked Chrome Hearts enough to give them a shot by stocking some of their pieces at Maxfield. And this was important okay, because okay. A, Maxfield is open to the general public, and B, Maxfield has a long list of celebrity clients. Yeah, because Chrome Hearts, you... Stars. You this gotta go in the store, and, and they don't really be having clothes, from my understanding. Long, you gotta Tom order. Hearts was being stocked at places like Bergdorf Goodman's, and was even being used in Vogue campaigns. In other words, Chrome I like the leather. Like the leather just looks really solid. And they were about to have another major breakthrough. In 1992, Richard Stark got a phone call from the Council of Fashion Designers of America. Like if I went biker, biker won prize for best jacket. Accessories designer. Biker coat, I definitely gotta come Chrome Hearts. If you're familiar with American fashion, if you I know could. how much of an honor it is to win a CFDA prize. Mm. But remember, Richard doesn't really consider himself to be a fashion designer. Instead, he considers himself to be more of a craftsman. So when he got I the call, that. he didn't know what the CFDA was and thought it was actually a telemarketing call. Richard recalls that the CFDA wanted him to pick a celebrity to present the award to him. He knew exactly who he wanted, but he refused to tell the CFDA who he had picked, and he told them that if they didn't trust him, they should hire their own backup. As we now know, Richard picked pop icon Cher. Okay. That's a good pick. Are you ready? Are you ready? To you three men that I really love a lot. I think they're extremely talented. In fact, they made this bag. It doesn't work. It's just an accessory, and soon they're going to be able to make it open. <laughs> but I promised them I would wear hey, it tonight. Just a prototype. So I put anything in it. But these guys are just a prototype. Very rough proof of concept. And very smooth on the inside. And uh, hey, yo, what she mean by that, Cher? Chrome hearts. Yeah, I'd like to thank Lori Lynn, my love. Evie Quaid and Cher and all the rest of the classic sleazy bitches that wear our <laughs> <laughs> It's worth noting here that the Starks are still very close personal friends with Cher, and she's almost always wearing something Chrome Hearts. Even though Richard didn't really care about the award, and probably still doesn't, 
If you ask him today, he'll acknowledge that it really helped jumpstart the brand because being listed among the CFDA prize winners drew a lot of new eyes to Chrome Hearts. Okay. This included the eyes of other designers. Do like y'all make sure y'all take y'all notes? Sandra. Make sure y'all Chrome Heart heads out there taking y'all notes. I know y'all just be rocking the Chrome Heart hats. And y'all don't really know what's going on with the Chrome Hearts, man. Get get tuned in. Comme des Garçons and Dover Street Market, who would then go on to help introduce Chrome Hearts into the Japanese fashion market. The brand would become extremely popular throughout all of Asia, so this may have very well opened the floodgates. Chrome Hearts was exploding in America, too. The brand was selling so well at Maxfield so that Chrome Hearts been, helped the open been a the thing. of their own right across the street. They didn't open any other locations until 20, 1996 20, 20, 19, when they set up shop in That New was just York a hype. City. And then again in 1999 we rock with when they opened a location in Tokyo. Even though Chrome Hearts was expanding and had become more popular than ever, Richard and Lori Lynn Stark never let things get out of control. And in a sense, this was just the beginning. So they made sure to keep control of the brand, which is important. Design language. Throughout that the chromey. evolution of Chrome Hearts, they've never compromised their design process. They never they look like they keep it in house, like everything. And they've only ever collaborated with people that they want to collaborate with. In so they don't ways, do Chrome seasonal Hearts collections. The they just, they just dropping their ago. pieces. And I think that's why it's been so successful. That's pretty dope. They I kept mean, it authentic to them. There are other brands I can think of that have such a well-established design language. The formula is basically leather, silver, stylized crosses, and yeah. old English font. Yeah. Having an established design language is such it's, an important it's thing for a brand. Very, Hearts very authentic it helps them to them. Stand out from the million other grunge aesthetic-inspired brands, and because they do so much custom work that you have to have signature design elements if you want people to know it's your work. Now it goes without saying that Chrome Hearts has mastered its own unique style, and to me that's why it's always really fascinating to see their collaborations. Chrome Hearts. It makes sense though. Like if you a biker, you gonna want your stuff chromed out. Why why wouldn't your heart be chromed out? Like I'm going to preface this section of the video by saying that Richard Stark is really the like term collaboration. Why not? According to him, what we call collaborations are just opportunities to work with people he wants to work with on projects he genuinely wants to work on. A I collaborative agree that in effort. recent years, the term collaboration has definitely taken on a very commercial connotation that doesn't quite match what Chrome Hearts is doing. So for the purposes of this video, when I say it, let's just assume we're using his definition. Beyond the spur of the moment collaborations with some of the legendary rock bands mentioned earlier, one of Chrome Hearts' first major collaborations was with the Rolling Stones in 2000. All that LV stuff makes me wonder if we can do a deep dive into like the LV Supreme collab. Like if they done any like documentaries on that, that would be fire. I want to add that to the list. 2002. Now obviously by this point the Starks were deeply rooted in the rock and roll scene. But surprisingly, they had never actually met any members of the Rolling Stones when they agreed to design some tour gear for the band, which included a diamond-studded belt in the shape of their iconic logo made for Mick Jagger. Then in 2004, Chrome Hearts stepped a little further into the fashion industry by partnering with Yves Saint Laurent to release t-shirts. They followed this up by working with Comme des Garçons in 2007, and then Rick Owens in 2010. Oh yeah, those a few are hard. years later in 2014, they collaborated with Gareth Pugh and Carson McColl, and after that, they collaborated with Virgil Abloh's Off White in 2015. Hmm. Richard and Virgil okay. have since become fairly frequent collaborators and have worked together on a number of projects. So to me, it's really cool that Chrome Hearts has collaborated with some so of the biggest Chrome names Heart in luxury Sims. fashion, dark fashion, as well as in streetwear. Are they real? They've even worked with longtime customer and friend of the family Bella Hadid on several occasions. Anyway, these are just a few of their standout collaborations, and of course, they've done a ton of custom work for countless celebrities, and this just helps the brand continue to grow. Okay, so there are a few things I want to talk about in regards to the future of Chrome Hearts. For starters, Richard and Lori Lynn Stark are putting all the right pieces in place for Chrome Hearts to be around for a long time to come. 
That's good. Right now, the headquarters of Chrome Hearts is currently 250,000 square feet spread across three blocks in Hollywood. And this includes a fully equipped furniture workshop, gold and silver smithing station, Dang. printing station, basically everything they need to make it's whatever It's a two-block like, warehouse? They aren't outsourcing their production to anyone, so they have full control over everything they make. That's tough. A lot of brands, even big name ones, don't have anywhere near this advanced of a production facility. So this shows that the Starks are very serious about investing in their future. So they produce everything Speaking themselves. Investing, in 2014, the Starks purchased the minority stake in the luxury cashmere knitwear label Elder Statesman, which won the 2012 CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund Award. Again, okay. this goes to show that the Starks are still focused on growing and expanding their business in new and exciting directions. Now, if we're going to talk about the future of Chrome Hearts, something we absolutely must bring up is the fact that Chrome Hearts is a family business. As we've talked mm, about, Chrome Hearts is yeah, I heard that a lot too. Richard and Lori Lynn Stark. But in recent years, their three children have started getting involved as well. Here we have Richard and Lori Lynn, then we have their son Christian Stark, their daughter Frankie Bell Stark, and their daughter Jesse Jo Stark. <laughs> House of Stark. As the oldest, Jessie Jo has had a major impact on making Chrome Hearts as popular as it is today. She's currently the vice president of Chrome Hearts, and has played a major part in curating the brand's creative direction, building a social media presence, and opening oh, yeah, she's partnerships done her thing. with people like her close friend Bella Hadid. On top of her business and fashion savvy, she's actually a really talented singer and songwriter, so I highly recommend you go check out some of her work. I didn't know she did all I that. I should also know here that Jesse Joe's the one who introduced her former boyfriend Matt Giacomo to the brand. If you're familiar with Chrome Hearts, you'll know him as Matty Boy, and you've probably seen some of his designs before. In his current role as artistic he director, is. he's definitely added a flair to the Chrome Hearts clothing line, and so far it's been a major hit, particularly amongst fans of streetwear. Beyond that, the twins Christian and Frankie Bell are also venturing into the world of fashion on their own. Christian currently runs an environmentally conscious brand called Thrill Trip, and Frankie Bell currently runs a swimwear line called Dipped in Blue. These are both really cool projects that they're working on, and I'll link them in the description so you can take a look. That's pretty cool. Overall, it's really cool to see that the whole Stark family is involved in running Chrome Hearts. That's how you do it. That's it really like... Show that the brand will be around for a long time. That's really dope to make an American fashion brand. Family, so I'd say Chrome Hearts is you don't really see too many of those in a... What well, was... It's like produced all in America. Like that's how it goes from Levi, Levi Strauss, more contemporary. So that's basically everything I wanted to touch on for this video. But I do just want to conclude by re-emphasizing that there are really no other brands quite like Chrome Hearts. Ever. Yeah, Chrome Hearts is special. I appreciate y'all watching this with me. Um, we'll do more thread education, thread education reactions in the future. Uh, I see I'm rocking the hair in Preston, so they would definitely want to do that one real soon. But leave a like if you like it, subscribe, 